so you've I know you've had several past lives uh, that or <laughs> let me rephrase that. I know you remember several past lives and uh, I've never remembered some of mine. And I'm still curious about this notion. I, I mean, I do believe I've had multiple lives, several places. I, I'm just not understanding uh, how where to put them, because in my mind, they're happening right now. Uh, so in one way, I'm living all these lives at the same time, because there's no such thing as time. Anywho, I would love to hear a little bit about your uh, memories of past lives, how they came about. And uh, many questions there, actually, like, why do you think certain lives came forward? So I would love for you to share about those memories. Sure. I don't know where to start, but I feel the same as you. The concept that is so hard to grasp, but I do believe they're all happening now at this point in space and time. Um, I also have future memories, but I'll, I'll tell you about my most recent one. I don't even ask for these things. They just... They just happened to me. But what I want to say in essence from what I've learned from all of my past lives is they're so real and they're so vivid. And what I've learned from all of them is a tool. So how I've, how I've felt so strong, how I've overcome obstacles, how I've had the gift of sight and all of those I've remembered. So my most re I'll just tell you my most recent one. In January, I went for a trip to Morocco and I thought I'd go for, a... it was cold and winter in France and I'm Australian. <laughs> it didn't su wasn't sunny for a long time. So I went to Morocco for a week thinking I'd have a nice sunny holiday, which I did. But I got there and I just felt that I'd been here before. I was so familiar. I, in some way, it felt comfortable like home. I guess people have these experiences or meet people that, they just know them or they just get along really well. So I walked through the, the supermarkets in Marrakesh looking for trinkets or I don't know, something to buy as a tourist while I was shopping. And I, I don't, whoever's been to Marrakesh to the supermarkets, <laughs> the haggling and people trying to sell you things that started driving me crazy. And there's incredible little mazes, but everything's the same. It's all mass produced. And I wanted to find something original. So about four hours later, I was so hot and I wanted to get out of there. And I saw this little antique shop and I thought, well, maybe they've got something special in there. And I went in there and I bought this, I think, a little copper bowl. And there was this man here in my terrible French <laughs> and he, his terrible English, we managed to converse and he was very sweet and he was so happy. And he said, my family has been doing this for three generations. We travel all across Morocco. And would you like to see my treasure trove upstairs? And I thought, well, I would have loved, I mean, I love to, but it, being a woman alone in a Muslim country, I felt a bit uncomfortable, but he said, come and follow me up. So I, we went up these little stairs and Oh my gosh, it was like Aladdin's cave. It was incredible, all the pieces he had, the, the jewellery, the artefacts from, it was just, and I just felt all these memories. I almost could feel all the energy of these lives, of all these people. It was amazing what he was showing me, old camel skin containers for milk and wallets and uh, bridal beads. It was it was amazing. And then he said, would you like to look at my one of my most special treasures? And I said, of course I would. And he had this beautiful box that was inlaid, I think, with marble. And he got out his key and opened it. And there was all these bangles, he told me, that were slave bangles. And I felt dizzy as almost as if I've had a, had a shot of vodka, the, the room started spinning. And it, I think there was about 20 bracelets in there, but I saw the one and I picked it up and something happened to me. My body started tingling and I couldn't put it on my arm because it was too small because what they would do is they put it on the slaves and open it and then weld it on. So it couldn't be taken off. But I, held it in my hand and I said to him, look, do you mind if I just sit down for a minute and close my eyes? And 
this woman came to me. It was the strangest thing. And it was so real right in this room. I saw her in my mind's eye. I didn't see her with my physical eyes. It was unbelievable. And she looked like a slave. And I saw markings on her arm and, and cuts. And she looked at me with her eyes wide open. And she couldn't believe, even though we looked different, she couldn't believe it was her. And she started crying and she said, you're free. And I said, yes, I am. And she said, this is so amazing. My life has been worth it. I will die in peace to think that one day I will be free. And so many more things happened. And I saw her life. I saw her beatings. I saw her rape. I saw how she was taken. Horrific life. But with past lives, you, you feel the emotion. You don't feel the pain. And she said, I'm free. But I saw her, that, I mean, so many more things happened. And then I had dreams that night. But that experience taught me about the strength and the tenacity to go on to hope. And she was a kind person. She was a loving person despite what happened to her. And I remember she said to me, how amazing to be able to walk alone as a woman, to be able to sit when you're body is weary, to be able to drink when you're thirsty, to be able to eat when you're hungry, to say no when you don't want your body to be abused. She, she was so clear, all these messages, and she said, and to clothe yourself when you don't wish to be naked. It was so profound, and her heart opened. I saw her heart, and it beamed into my heart, and there was just such love there. It was really, really an amazing experience. Um, the man continued to talk, and I gave him back the bracelet. I thought of purchasing it, but I didn't want to. I, I will always remember that experience in my heart. And it's funny, we went downstairs. He was this short little man, and he said, you sure you don't want to buy anything else? And I said, no, maybe I'll come another day. And he said, do you want me to tell you the secret to life? And I said, yes, I'd, I'd, I'd love you to. And he said, well, I'm an old, he was an old man. He said, I'm an old man, but the secret to life is to always follow your heart. To watch the full video, click the link below. And I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel.